Hi, welcome to the Literature Cafe Global. We are honoring James Floyd and chaos. This is a piece for James Floyd called The Bus. And here we have Mr. Patrick Michael. So, poetry on the way. The Bus. Riding the bus from my stop in North Nashville to my job in West Nashville, 23, 5.30 a.m. city blocks. I know all the people on this bus, and they know me. We've been riding together a long time. We each have our own individual experiences, but our histories are very similar, like family. That's Reverend Hudson in the seat behind Richard the driver. He's close to retirement, works in one of the office buildings near the end of the line, cleaning up after and running errands for executives his grandchildren's age. Wanted to be a preacher when he was young, didn't work out that way, but he's a deacon in his church. Sometimes when there's a lull in the conversation on the bus, Reverend Hudson Holmes Precious Lord, take my hand. Or some other spiritual. I suspect he had a pretty good singing voice at one time, but was never told so or encouraged. On the corner of 63rd and Centennial Boulevard, at the stop where Richard stops to get a cup of coffee, Reverend Hudson runs in and buys his lottery tickets. I don't guess he ever hit not big anyway, cause he's still riding this bus. We all call him Rev anyway. Sitting across the aisle from Reverend Hudson is Miss Lojack, the only white person on the bus. She was the prettiest girl at her high school prom, was going to college to be a nurse, but instead eloped with her boyfriend in his 55 Chevy with a stick in the floor and the four bar check of caps to the next county where they never got married. And he honey and the honeymoon lasted till the money ran out and the rent was due. One day he revved that Chevy up, drove off, and she never saw him again. Two months later she found out she was pregnant. She had two more children by two more fiancés over the years, all grown now. She holds no resentment against her children's fathers, but sometimes in quiet moments she closes her eyes and imagines how it might have been. We'll all call her Miss Lojack anyway. Hello everyone. This evening, thank you Patrick and Brian. Um, tonight, we are commemorating two living legends, James Floyd, the Jefferson Street poet, and Carl Thomas, also known as Chaos. These men have been around sharing their experiences, their long lives, their wisdom using poetry. And um, they've been a blessing to us. Um, for in the literary community and the liter and the communities in in general, James has created movies, not written novels, um, and chaos as well has done nu numerous events with his work, where the bottom line was they always tried to reach people, and um, we're here to commemorate them. Um, a friend of mine once said that um, you should get your flowers while you give people their flowers while they're still alive. And I agree with that. And we're living at a time that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, regardless of our age. So don't think we're looking at these guys because they're our seniors. No, we're looking at them because this is something that needs to be done. Tonight we have a lineup of poets that are giving their dedication. They include Noel, Marie, Black Mare. Brian Bichetti, Navita Gunner, Christine Hall, Pamela Hurst, Amy, Melinda Hoskins, myself, Henry L. Jones, Francesca Kirkpatrick, 
Michael Diallo, McClendon, Joseph Seward, Powell, and Siona Rose. Um, the last poet, Siona, we have a, um, a video we're going to share. She had another obligation. That's what happens when you work with poets. But I am glad that the poets here tonight are going to provide their dedications and some words, perhaps, as to what the poet that they're dedicating um, to, what they means. Just to share some moments, share some moments, as well as some of them may read poems that were written or published by our um, living legacies. James and Carl, thank you for coming and spending this afternoon with us viewers to allow us to give some love and give some literary uh, blessings to you. So without further ado, we are now going to begin our lineup of poets. Our first poet is Navita Gunner. Hello, James. It is so good seeing you because of the history that you know uh, that we have had. And it's been uh, really a, a, a heck of a history. And I missed you and like uh, wish that we could do this uh, again. But I'm so happy to be asked to do a dedication to you. And this is what I came up with. My poem is entitled, They Called Him the Jefferson Street Poet. Junk man, junk man, if you can't use it, I sure can. Junk man. This and other amazing poems would echo off the walls at Windows on the Cumberland and other poetry venues, recited by one of the most wondrous poets ever born. They called him the Jefferson Street Poet, and his poems were known far and wide, and his voice, could transport you to other times. All you had to do was close your eyes as his melodious deep voice rose and fell. A stillness would engulf the rooms, which would keep the hearer transfixed like a trip to the moon. The man is a legend in his time, and I am so glad to be able to call him a friend of mine. Love you, James. Love you, Navita. Thank you. Thank you, Navita. Our next poet is Christine Hall. Now, let me tell you something. Um, many of the people amongst these, um, the crowds of poets, they lead other poetry groups. Um, we, when I became, came back to Nashville, and began talking to people, you know, you ever see someone, you're like, you look familiar. Christine was someone that used to come to Kijiji Coffee House, where Navita, who you just heard, was a host and I was a co-host. And so that we just strayed off separate days. But we've learned that everyone at some point in their life has encountered each other. And I think that's so bizarre. Christine is the host of Poetry and the Brew. Without further ado, Christine Hall. Thank you. Thank you so much, Henry. And thank you, Brian. And I just really appreciate this time here to pay tribute to James C. Floyd, the Jefferson Street poet, and chaos. Oh, we love you. We appreciate you so much. I mean, pillars of our community doesn't even begin to cover it. And you're poetically gifted with the gifts you give to us in so many other ways, the spirit that you carry and infuse everywhere. You, I, I just thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm sure you suspect how you have touched all our lives. I hope that this event shows you a little bit more, but also I just hope that that's reflected to you continuously as you go on through your lives, all the people you touch every day and cumulatively throughout, you know, a lifetime and counting. Um, I wrote a poem dedicated to chaos and I picked a poem out by James C. Floyd, the Jefferson Street poet. Both of them are um, pretty brief, so I will share those right now. Thank you. A Call to Chaos. For what necessity better bears the invention if a call to action than the voice that carries downstairs to all the corners, but listens 
We are the children. Hush. He calls to order, and we call this chaos. As the order of the day, chaos reigns, tells us trials of historical proportion, of errors so human and their correction, of love, the higher law, rooting in to redress the wrongs, marching over broken jars. Hearken, Gideon's army, the unified force of nature that is community, trumpets blaring chaotic bursts, poetry for the people who weather the worst, together meeting in the cloud, or when the tornado touches down, clearing pathways in the sacred cacophony we call chaos, and in this we are harmonious. Love you, chaos. And here is one. Let's see. Can we? It's backwards. Of course, they're always backwards. But in front of me, oh, it is all right. And it is some gentle moving thing. I have selected mist. Night. And as you lie in slumber, nature is busy making a poem, a beautiful poem to be recited in the morning. Night, and as we dream of the foolish things we will pursue tomorrow, the wind is busy writing a song, a sweet song to be sung in the morning. Night, and as you and I kneel behind closed doors, asking for selfish things, the sun is busy painting a masterpiece, a colorful masterpiece to be displayed in the morning. Morning. And in our haste, we miss it all. Thank you. Thank you all again. James C. Floyd, the Jefferson Street poet, chaos. Oh, oh, we honor you and appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. The next poet that we have on the lineup is someone that used to live in Nashville. And I met through another poet and Loved her, fell in love with her and her husband, Joe Spear. It's Pamela Hearst. And Thank you. Yes. They used to videotape many events. And, you know, it's really important for us to document our literary events or just arts events in, in general, even though we have handhelds, this and that. But sometimes people have an event and they forget. we got to record this so people know. Pamela Hearst and Joe for those people early on in the 90s that did it. And they have an archive of some wonderful events as well as many articles. Pam has written numerous articles. They had um, a publication as well, Beat Licks. Mm -hmm. uh, they were there and that's what we still need today. We don't yeah. really have someone that's going to these literary events, writing about them and talking about them, but we, I guess we have social media. So without further yeah. Yeah, thank Hearst, you. AKA the godmother of poetry, I believe. <laughs> it's been a long time since I heard that. I will spend the rest of my life um, paying tribute to Joe's literary heritage. Be like Joe Spear. Okay, James, this is for you. Icon, a symbolic representative worthy of veneration. Best example of an ideal. From the beginning of performance poetry in Nashville, James C. Floyd has been there. It is my honor to have served as his editor and we could spend hours discussing syntax and the merits of a single comma or three periods. <laughs> and we loved it. It was so much fun. We spent hours, hours. It is my honor to have served as his promoter. And it is my honor to have served as his publisher. When Beatlick News Poetry and Arts Newsletter gave him his moniker, the Jefferson Street Poet. When I attended my first poetry readings at Charlie Fenton's Windows on the Cumberland in 1989, James was there. And we're gonna hear this a lot tonight. And I heard, Jumpman, 
junk man. If you can use it, I sure can. Junk man. <clears throat> His non-iconoclastic standard was delivered evocatively, evocatively, rendering images of Nashville simpler days. He spoke with ease and a friendly, familiar voice. As a Nashvillian, I knew him and he knew me. He was iconic. To me, James's greatest accomplishment was how well he treated his mother. And James walked out of a Tennessee state prison, an ex-convict, only to return 10 years later as an icon of poetry. Now, I can't think of James without thinking of Beatlick Joe. And with his gracious permission, the Beatlicks performed his popular Poets Are Crazy in bars and coffee houses all across America. I remember the spectacular collaborations. James the Poet on Spear Presents Television. James the Screenwriter in the films, the film festivals with Andy Van Roon of the Nashville Film Festival renown. James the mentor at the Tennessee State Prisons. James the playwright at, with Dr. Patrick Edoye in the TSU, Tennessee State University Drama Department. No one, no other poet has climbed so high, having been knocked so low in the beginning. Not one. The Jefferson Street poet is a man of which movies are made now. And I spent some of the happiest and most productive years of my life collaborating with the Jefferson Street poet. Thank you, Pamela. I got chill bumps. Thank you, Pam. All right. I just want to ask James one thing. James, you remember being out there at Tyree Beach in Savannah when we went down with that out there at midnight in the beach in the ocean? Remember <laughs> in Savannah, Georgia? Yeah. The of uh, this, the latest uh, edition of Some Gentle Moving Thing. Uh, I did that cover with the camera I borrowed from you. Oh, get out. <laughs> That's wonderful. We had some great times. Good memories. Okay, moving on. That was wonderful tribute. Our next poet is someone that I actually met through James and found when I heard her recite her poetry, I was like, whoa. She's something else. And then found out she was an artist. She's into yoga. And I was like, oh, OK. Um, and she's also performed with me um, at an event. And she I asked for volunteers, and she stepped up. So I said, like, oh, I love her even more, because she's got guts. So we have next Noelle Marie Blackmare. And um, I think you're going to hear another special treat from her as well. Noelle? I've known James for almost eight years now, ever since I stumbled in Tennessee from New Jersey. Um, he must have saw something in me uh, that I, I still am finding in myself. Uh, I have really, I consider James my, a mentor and um, someone that made me realize that being a poet isn't is yeah you're crazy but there's more crazy people out there um as long as we keep sharing um it makes sometimes the world a little better you know and <laughs> my phone is about to die all right so i'm about to 
share um, that we've been, James and I have been always having this ongoing discussion of, of writing and why we write. And, um, you know, sometimes I really am trying to look at writing and creating as divine play, as James would call it. And so uh, I made this poem in honor of James and divine play. Oh, and we're charging my phone at this very moment too. Awesome. Okay. Text revealed. Um, and then there's a little gift at the end, um, a little visual gift as well. Just pick up the fucking pen and write. The Jefferson Street's poet's words echo in the wind. I am but a vessel. This fleeting flesh that I grasp so tightly does not free my mind. What frees these creatures that destroy the land they walk on? I hear his voice, wisdom dancing with his shadows. I too tango with stories of ghosts only my dreams know of. We write about trees, how man is the only one who kills the thing that bleeds life. I wonder what the trees that he played on heard as a child, what they would have said. I wonder if they're still there growing, giving life to the lost youth, climbing her limbs. I think of the man who found freedom in spite of cages. I hear the acceptance and the understanding in every little sigh, in every hum that life is inevitably going to kill us. <laughs> nothing we say is nothing we don't know, he says. I fear my words don't have enough blood. We write for ourselves that we don't know just yet. Who don't I know? We must destroy ourselves to rebuild. Get back to the playground. Divine play. The wind laughs. I hear the Jefferson Street poet again. It's time to create. Just pick up the fucking pen and write. Or paint. Or smear whatever you can on something. So this is for you, James. I bathe myself in blue, dipped into the divine fountain splashed into a brief moment of santosha contentment before the storm i ran into the street mother earth cries i find myself dreaming of a cat <laughs> a cat that i never knew that if she ever got let out of her cage her name was baby aren't we all babies just trying to find the humming that could soothe our wounds that's why we write. We all hum. I hear it when my cat purrs. Uh, thank you so much for just existing, James. And this is a little picture of my attempt at making my first cat painting. <laughs> and I'm glad to be here today. Thank you, Noel. Yes, thank you, Noel. Thank you very much. Our next poet is also uh, a person that hosts a um, one of our literary open mics, our poetry open mics. And um, I met her years ago in something that was called um, the Flat Right Open Mic Poetry. First, I met her at Poetry in the Brew. I mentioned Christine Hall. And then she kind of disappeared. And then I heard of this flat right open mic. And I went there, check it out. And there she was. And I was like, oh, that's where you've been. And then she told me, well, yeah, I started this. So I, I would visit often. Now Flat Rock Open Mic has become Gestalt Open Mic. And um, she's, like many others, are dedicated to maintaining an open mic. And Christine, as well as Amy, they still do this online during this difficult time. So without further ado, Amy, Melinda, Hoskins. Thank you so much, Henry and Brian. 
and James and Chaos and everyone who's reading tonight. I'm really humbled to be here for the elders as well as my fellow poets. I'm really humbled to be here. I wrote a poem for Chaos. Um, and Rob and I, my husband Rob and I have been interviewing Chaos and we have maybe four parts, uh, but it's about his life story it was so brilliant. We needed to record it. So we'll be sharing more of that as it's available. Grio, from mirror to mask, multitudinous modes of perception, chaos fans his mysteries before our eyes. What do we see today? Who is he? His light shines through. Griot, oral historian, friend, fierce. In high school, chaos sat down with the sit-ins, saw them resolved in time, a new level of freedom found in downtown Nashville. Went to Catholic school growing up, walked to school through Fisk University campus, often visiting the library, found his hero and inspiration, Langston Hughes, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, Nevermore. So many bright things did he find at the library. He shared with friends at school, the Catholic nuns shushing his followers, don't believe what he says. He took on his own education and sense in a long independent study ran away from home in high school to be with his grandmother in Nashville, had a place, had a job, only to come home one night to find his father sitting on his bed. You either come home in two weeks or go into the army. So Chaos chose the latter, dreading the slow pace of his hometown in Columbia back then. Went to Vietnam, 1966 to 1968, started an ordnance training, learned Vietnamese so quickly, soon he led troops on reconnaissance for so long a tour, but never lost a man. What did you say to Papa San? What mask did you have to wear then? On his last night there, barely being flown out by a chopper, dropped right outside base and walking through his own line to freedom only to find less freedom back home in the USA. More masks, more mystery. He started performing and writing early on, entertaining his family on the mic. He's always been on the mic. Wrote poetry on the way to Vietnam and since. Now it's about the pandemic, the tornado in March. Soon he'll read a poem he wrote dedicated to a local leader making a street just for him in North Nashville. Chaos spends hours at, at countless hours at churches, schools. One student asked him how he felt fighting for freedom in Vietnam when he didn't have freedom back at home. He is there to help teach young and old. Brilliant mind, vibrant, wise soul, funny man, beloved. There is so much more. No wonder masks make sense to inspire curiosity and a bit of a prank. Prankster? Perhaps so. Griot? Yes. Oral historian? Yes. Only in the most wise and loving sense. Treasure. Elder. Chaos. We all love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, thank you, Amy, for that beautiful tribute as well. Next on our list, we talk about small worlds. I met a young lady, Francesca Kirkpatrick, and that name was very, very unique. Um, there's certain, I'm Jones, got a bunch of Joneses, you know, and Johnsons and all that, but Kirkpatrick. And... Um, when I looked at her, you know, you see someone just like something seems familiar. Anyway, um, used to do this performance of Celebration of Cultures, and there was a guy there, and his last name was Kirkpatrick. And I said, wait a minute, are, do you know, um, oh my God, his name slipped, I was just thinking about Bradley. it. Brad, Bradley. Bradley, she said, yes, he's my husband. <laughs> and we met, we met years ago, 
And uh, I believe you were there. And uh, anyway, I didn't know she was a poet mm -hmm. and she's a bunch of wonderful things. And we've become closer as poets and friends and, you know, but started with Bradley, all these circles in life that overlap. And of course, Francesca is here because she knows some of our living legends and um, she's gonna share her dedication with you now. You guys, this is such a great honor to be able to even just see you and to have this technology to be able to hear you and to love you and you know just say okay i'm sitting here and and i'm still looking at both of these men these strong strong men no matter what anybody's ever said to the past to whatever no you guys are like the strong the strong for us um I've got things I want to say to both of you. So first I'm going to go with James because he's uh, just, he just became first on my little page here. So, and I do some mismatch poetry. So this is kind of off the cuff, but uh, here, here we go, James, this is for you. And I also know that you guys know Navita and she loves you as well. And she's going to, you know, she came earlier and told you how much she loves you guys. Um, okay. James. Jefferson Street poet, James C. Floyd. And I, I added your thing. Here comes the bus. The junk man is echoing across the windows in the Cumberland. I imagine a day where you are sitting with boots at the bar, laughing sometimes. He was the bartender there at Windows in the Cumberland. We are together today to celebrate James C. Floyd and his marvelous words. Today often comes to us with poems at Poetry in the Brew and the Literature Cafe Global. A sweet song in his words, a masterpiece, forever in our minds. We need more James C. Floyds, but not exactly like you, because you are the only you that we need. People are so honored by his conversations about commas and periods that's what pamela says about him and i believe that and they met somewhere back in 1989 and i kind of remember a little bit of this years later hearing him yelling out the junk man the junk man reading the simple you know kind of at the readings in the simple days james is an ex was an ex convict and of poets i believe that even those words that you mastered while behind bars were the most powerful because that's usually what happens if you read history um i just recall you also because i'm a part of the film festivals and andy van roon and all these other people that they were saying you've been there you've been the playwright you've been so many things but the main thing is is we can hear you forever yelling junk man junk man junk man so never forget those words i'm sure they'll be with you forever it's james c floyd i love you next i have one for carl carl um We are the children. Shh, hush. That's what you always heard. But I bet those words made you a stronger man. Because now you don't have to hush. We want to hear you. We want to hear you talk to us. Trump is blaring loud. And we hear his uh, harmonious words poetry in the brew yells out chaos and we hear you coming from a phone in your car you've been through things in your service and what a trooper chaos um, I'm so pleased when you uh, when you come out in your car after a tornado after all these disasters and you turn on your phone and you speak to us I feel you I watch the stories on YouTube and I feel the the man that helped all the people through 
service. You are such a true man. And through life's adventures, um, your happiness poem brings great joy to many. Uh, hearing the words bebop, bebop, you sit in so many things uh, you, you say and you stand for so many things. Vietnam, again, you never lost men. I'm thankful for Amy and her husband recording you for us because we will keep watching. So keep telling your stories to Amy and her husband. All the time you put into life, you are chaos, calming the world beyond us. I love you, chaos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you, Francesca. That's a great tribute as well. Moving on, our next performer, our next poet is a new friend of mine. Um, we have th four people that kind of helped pull this together. You met the first one, um, but this is David Kosey. And um, so those four people, is, uh, Brian Buschetti, who contacted me and said, hey, what do you think about honoring you know, some of our, our older poets that have been out there? And I was like, yeah, I love that idea. And um, I knew Patrick Michael, Michael um, because of um, Brian went to his host. And then I met David Kosey. I hope I said the last name correctly. And, um, and he's a dynamite poet as well. So now we're going to hear some um, words of dedication from David. James, last time uh, you were on the show, um, the Literature Cafe Global meet, um, I, I heard something that really, it really just kind of spoke to me. And it's about um, how you can't trust history books for true history. And uh, you have to kind of look a little further and, uh, you know, look into like the literature of eyewitness accounts of everyday people and the poetry and the art of the era in which you're trying to find history. And I thought that was really awesome. Um, so uh, this is a response in agreement to that, which is, uh, it's, a, it's something I wrote a few years back, maybe about five, four or five years ago. Um, this is a piece that I made called a Cat Cataclysmic Sky. So uh, it goes like this. The system is never gonna make things change. Will we ever go further if we do the same thing? Sometimes it feels like elastic on all sides. If no one's right, who is to guide? Just take the loss that came from you. Reserve it for when it will ever take you. Deny your individual fate to forget that. The worst of this may not even be here yet. So what really matters to you is that loved ones close to you. Can you set your thoughts aside? Reserve a time to heave your pride. I don't need resolution here. I don't need to know what to fear. The greater haze is all behind me. And some think they know what's, what's left to define me. How long is the wait for better days? It's inevitable after all, for things to fall to a change of heart. There must be somewhere that this has to start. In passiveness, I conquer endless. Faster than they can make amendments. With breath, my mind becomes the sky. My skin dissolves, my bones are dry. Like dust that was once emptiness, so far and wide exists the absence of everything they work towards, the lie they use to sell the wars. I see in time, there may seem no need for any extra mouths to feed. Too great will be the liability for those who do not share their greed. Some say that we're never free when dreams are fueled by no rules like anarchy. Some, some, un, some, do, not, some do not take seriously that some of us do not fall to the apathy. So how long is the wait for better days? It's inevitable after all for things to change after things get worse. Just know what it is and before it gets there first. There's enough to deviate their will. They're in for a surprise. So vast the void, so small the light they use to watch the road at night. They're the pawn in the greater game. Emancipation grows out of pain. In emptiness, I kindly wait. The more they lock down, the greater my faith. I don't need resolution here, even when nothing seems the least bit clear, because the greater haze is all behind me. 
when some think that they're what's left to define me. Some say that we're never free. When dreams are fueled by no rules, like an anarchy, winter wolves survive the blizzards, always one's choice to bear a wither. So, um. thank, so thanks, James, and thanks for uh, everybody else that comes and does these, these events and stuff like that. Um, life is art, and art is life. So I just appreciate all of this. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, David. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I see we have a few more people who've joined us. Um, uh, Michael. Michael is an actor, poet. He's hosted his own shows, um, inviting numerous people in the arts and entertainment industry. And uh, he's here today. Um, theater and, and film, right, Michael? And yeah. Then, and today, I saw him holding a guitar. And I was like, wait a minute. This brother has <laughs> got a musician as well. We need to get him out there. But then, you know, in Nashville, where we're located, you'll find a lot of people on the side. They, they can play an instrument. And a lot of people have home studios. So without further ado, Michael Bialo McClendon. Thank you, Henry. I appreciate you. And I appreciate everyone on the line tonight. And before I share this poem, of Chaos, I just wanted to say congratulations to the Jefferson Street Poet, as well as Chaos. Uh, we love you guys, we honor you guys, and uh, tonight is very special, and I'm honored to be a part of it. Uh, Chaos is a great friend, uh, a great friend, and uh, we have some similar roots. And even though I'm reciting the poem uh, that I wrote, uh, reading a poem I wrote for him, I wanted to just say these two lines, because I love it. When he steps to the microphone, steps quietly to the microphone, he'll say, Listen to me. Listen to me. Okay, all right. So I like that. So I just wanted to say, I wanted to have the opportunity to say that. Uh, so this poem is called A Tribute to Chaos. From Mississippi to Vietnam. From Vietnam to Tennessee. From mighty man to trusted friend. Therein lies his legacy. Rough. Rough on the outside, gentle, gentle within. The heart of a child in the mightiest of men. Lending a helping hand to those who don't quite have enough. Fighting for the people when the going gets tough. Writing words of wisdom, embracing microphones at churches, at festivals and even over telephones. He's a cool drink of water in the midst of the fight, a star shining brightly in the darkness of night. In times like 2020, a year like we've never seen, he means what he says, and he says what he means. He's a brother like no other. I'm sure you all agree, from mighty man to trusted friend, and therein lies his legacy. We love you, Chaos. I love you, and thanks for the opportunity to share. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. I love you all. Thank you for that dedication, Michael. Thank you very much. You all. Um, at the end, near the end, we're gonna close out this session and hear some music from Michael. I'm excited because I've never heard him play. He's being very humble. I bet he's really bad. Who knows, it might be another um, um, uh, great guitarist and leave the poetry and the acting and just play music, but hey, you can do both, I guess. So our next poet, Joseph Seward Powell. This is a brother that I met at numerous open mics and I love his style. And once again, that circle, you know, all, everyone knows each other. It's just a wonderful community. So without further ado, Joseph Seward Powell. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, everyone. Um, like everyone has presented so far tonight, I'm honored to be invited to be part of this. Um, I'm very inspired by both uh, James Floyd and uh, Chaos. 
and uh, I'm honored to have been asked to be a part of this evening. Um, I just have a short piece tonight that I wrote for Chaos, but it could apply to uh, James Floyd as well. And uh, I guess I should have uh, contacted Amy uh, sometime before this because my piece is also called Grio. Um, so here goes. And uh, thank you again for the opportunity. There are those who are chosen by the ancestors to speak their truth, to share their stories, through whom their blood still cries from the ground. Griot, storyteller, poet, words made into flesh and then back again to show us the way to be the truth that gives us life, to be theirs and our voice in the wilderness, to create chaos of the righteous kind in a world that no longer sees, no longer listens or hears. I, for one, I'm humbled to know such a one, blessed even, inspired by, and aspiring to, hoping, praying that when I am of a certain age, the ancestors will find favor with me and anoint me as they have him and others like him to tell their stories and speak their truth. Ashe, thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you for that wonderful dedication, brother. Our next poet is someone who's been running his mouth, introducing everyone, that's myself. And um, I, I know both of these wonderful poets. I have been influenced by both of these brothers. I first met James Floyd at a special place when I was a student at Fisk, and one of my mentor, professor friends, Earl Hooks, took a group of us off campus to um, a place called Windows on the Cumberland because on campus we had this thing called the Fist Herald Chill, our on campus open mic. And um, you know, it was an adventure. You're away from home. Back then we walked, uh, but we got there. And that was my first experience in somewhat of a bar like settings. I mean, the setup. And there I was um, amongst these older poets. I thought it was really cool. And Mr. Hooks introduced me to um, James Lloyd. But he introduced me as, he, he introduced James as the Jefferson Street poet. Fisk is located on Jefferson Street. So I was like mesmerized. I was like, the Jefferson Street poet. I was like, whoa, who is this guy? And, um, you know, we sat at the table talking. James asked questions and so on. And then I heard him read. And I was like, wow, because the poets that I knew basically were in a lot of books at home. I tried to think back. A few family members wrote a little poetry, but they didn't call themselves poets. And there he was. And, and I was really just floored that day. Now, Carl, when I moved to Nashville, I heard him. I was like, chaos. And I have this eye when I see someone. I may not remember their, their name, but I remember their face. And ever since I heard him recite, I knew I didn't have a book by him. So I wasn't familiar, it wasn't the poetry. I hadn't met him at an event, some type of arts event, some type of reception and so on. 
And uh, we got to talking. We'd see each other at different events, like run into each other again and again and again. And, you know, we talk more. And um, he told me when our discussions how Windows of the Cumberland was one of his hangouts. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's where it was. So he was probably one of those poets, without doubt he was, that uh, I met or saw during um, that first time. I have a poem dedicated to both of these dynamic gentlemen. James, the first one, uh, this has a special meaning for me because um, as a student, you got a lot of that cafeteria food, which wasn't especially good. The day I went to Windows on the Cumberland with uh, Mr. Hooks, my roommate from New York took me to a place called Ed's Fish. And I tasted the best catfish that I ever had. And that place still exists. The food is still delicious. And um, later, so that day, tasting Ed Fish, and then that evening, that after that evening, Windows on the Cumberland. So here we go. My two pieces dedicated to my brothers. First one is titled Through the Windows for James Floyd. Found you stirring the gentle waves along the Cumberland River one night. Its stench rose burning nose hairs in this place of windows and words where a slow haze of cigarette smoke floated by our eyes breaking sight of you at the mic reciting your poetry. Your tongue spat into the gray folds of our brains awakening minds, planting seeds of thought and feelings within the channels of emptiness, adding just enough bullshit and lies to cover the aroma of pale death flowing along filthy shores below. Found you stirring the gentle waves, your hands orchestrated the currents, bringing up oily film for ashy, ashamed knees and elbows hiding without, within clothing. As you healed with your stories and smiles, you, the griot, cast it from the ancestors to become a voice for their forgotten eyes, looking for their memories and dreams, becoming you each moment you spoke, the griot sheltering the pain of lies. Your voice, Embracing night, talking to the stars, comedic songs of praise, Rio reaching out to the past. People on edge with ears listening and watching, hoping as your hands push the currents. Seeking lost catfish to whisper their buried treasures, trying to avoid that skillet and breadcrumbs. To uncover lost words of inspiration, they hid, now needed to reach many hearts and minds, breathing life into communities. That is the role of the griot that you are. Thank you, James. And this next poem is dedicated to chaos. And um, earlier it was mentioned how he, he would start his poems, and I love that part of it. I said, wow, that's. I love that, you know. So this poem is titled, Just Chaotic. Chaotic winds blow. Oh, in old memories into our thoughts as we relive painful moments, but then becomes a healing balm to soothe the pain through your words. Chaotic waters flow with tears trying to drown all of our grief and loneliness as, it, as they emerge but brings a baptismal pull to give hope that you give through your words. Chaotic fire burns, acres of trees full of our legacy roots, charring the evidence of who and what we were, bringing only a drizzle of sweat and tears, death and birth saves for the future we must remember you extinguish in this glory for the future with your words. Chaotic dreams disturb the mind and hearts, subtle or lucid messages sending symbols of direction to forecast what dreams may come, which you share. 
Chaotic days rise with the sun, stiff bones needing repair, but still move and keep on keeping on. Another glorious day to share, counting down the hours tonight, while the moon moves him to right and right, and he keeps going. Chaotic world turning, a planet covered in wars and fears, once a soldier that was in the middle to demonize and kill each other, but stood there continuing to hold on until nothing but rotting flesh and hollow bones, bones remains, but he found a healing. Chaotic poet reciting, a voice of many experiences, our ancestors smile on this soul, his words ever reaching so many. They whisper, carry on, they shout, Carry on! And this last poem um, is actually, oh my goodness, that is the last poem. I'm sorry, yes. Thank you very much, James, Jefferson Street Poet, and chaos, Carl Times Chaos um, for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing. As I told someone, look, these guys are not finished. They can live another 40 years. There's so much wonderful advances in medicine and technology. They are still thriving. They are still inspiring many, many people, including myself. And I treasure them being here, treasure their words, treasure their lives, treasure their love. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Henry. Oh. Our next poet that we have. Ah, this is our technological element that um, we're going to have to work out. Uh, Siona is another poet. She actually was part of two open mics. One was uh, or is Lyrical Brew over at um, Vanderbilt Barnes and Noble and the other was uh, Writings on the Wall with um, Dana Malone. And Sienna Roos uh, had another obligation which you know you have conflicts but what she did she got on and used this technology to present this beautiful video with some of her words to show a dedication. And I really appreciate her going to do that um, because you know we can't do everything. We can't be everywhere, but when um, you, it's important to find a way to make a way. That's what I always say. You know, use what you have and find a way to make a way. Wonderful things happen. So give me a minute. I'm going to switch to the share screen part of um, Zoom, and then you will be able to see Sienna's um, video. Thank God for Cynthia. Hello. My goodness, aren't we fortunate to be alive right now in the whole great expanse of universe and time to somehow be alive right now with you legends to be able to create alongside you here in this city at this time is such a an incredible gift so thank you it is an honor to honor you uh, tonight i've gotten to spend a lot of time reading either alongside chaos or hosting events with chaos red or sitting in the audience and listening to chaos uh, quite a bit and so this is uh, a poem for you it's called Genuflection for Chaos. We've been transfixed, transported, raised up like taxes and too many skinny buildings in New Nashville, except it feels more good, feels more true, feels wholly electrifying like a good word should. We've been shook. We've been woken up. 
We've been hit by a lasso of lightning made to be deep fried and salty, delicious like my granddad's chicken when grandma was too tired. We've been schooled on how to say the truth, meaning we've been schooled on how to see the truth, meaning no bullshit here. It's urgent that we stop the lies. We've been anointed because you've been appointed and you, you've been a sage of language smudging our minds clean so we can occupy. You've been somewhere more sacred than this world in your sleep. Been open to take us there, inviting us into your dreams. We've been unworthy. You've still been true. Except once. Because you said you've been a legend in your own mind. But we've been knowing this whole time that in the beginning was chaos. That's what arrived before the word, before the world. A divine unknowing colliding against itself until the center could hold. You've been a legend in all of our minds since the start of time. And we say ashe. Say hallelujah. Say new words for praise. Touch our knees to the grass. Concrete asphalt, carpet, hardwood, all the places where you have laid prostrate and forced to pray. And there we tilt our heads, a black nod in your direction. And there we raise our hands. You've been a gift from the sky. Thank you, friend. Chaos, I hope you feel loved and celebrated. James, I hope you feel loved and celebrated. What a wonderful time to love on you and celebrate all that you bring to us. Thank you. Thank you, Thea. I am back. I hope that you both feel loved and celebrated. We've tried our best to show you that love with our words. And words, poetry has a very unique relationship with lyrics and song. So what we're going to do now is hear the music of Michael. And this is going to be a treat because I've never heard him. I bet there's some people out there that have, but I've just been inside. That's an old, that's an old joke. He, he knows what I'm talking about. But I'm, I, one thing I do know, whatever he does, he does well. And uh, I think we're in for a treat. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate you, Henry. And again, uh, congratulations to the Jefferson Street Poet and to Chaos. Uh, many years ago now, at least three or four, uh, I had a chance to visit Chaos. We both live in Bordeaux, as well as some other people who are on the line. And so we had a chance to see one another. And this particular time, he was telling me that someone had called codes on him, I think because he had uh, his dog was in the yard, but his dog has been there for years. So but he was he was frustrated about this. And I could understand. And so he was just talking about how people were beginning, at, kind of like as Siona mentioned in her piece, uh, to uh, put things in his mailbox and offered by houses and things of that nature. And, and I get the mail as well. And so I thought about his frustration and my frustration and the frustration in the community. And I wrote a song uh, that he didn't know that I wrote it, but I wrote it because of our conversation. It's called To Them the Dollar is Ja. So just wanted to share it and uh, dedicated to the Jefferson Street Poet and the Chaos is called To Dim the Dollar is Ja. Mm -hmm. Dem don't care if them love you or not, because to them the dollar is job. 
Bum rush our neighborhoods Set us ablaze if them could Lock us up, no sympathy Then work us like slaves for pennies You say, how could this be? Well, it's so simple to see when to build them plush neighborhoods, them come and break up our communities. All because to them the dollar is ja. One day you'll see it, to them the dollar is ja. You'd best believe it, them don't care if them hurt you or not. Because to them the dollar is ja. Riding them bikes through our streets Like some kind of secret police Now city codes won't let us be Them target poor and elderly Again and again Them say them with friends But it's just pretend because we're only friends when it suits them That's how we know to them the dollar is ja You'd better know it to them the dollar is ja One day them show it Them don't care if them hurt you or not Because to them the dollar is ja Ooh, 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 ah, ah to dim the dollar is ja you best believe it to dim the dollar is ja one day you see it them don't care if them love you or not no 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 to them the dollar is ja To them the dollar is ja To them the dollar is ja Them don't care if them love you or not Because to them the dollar is ja That's it. Just wanted to share it. Chaos, you inspired the song, so I wanted to share it with you and share it with everyone. Love you all. And thanks for the opportunity, Henry. Man, that was awesome. That really was. Thank you, Michael. I mean, thank, thank you, Bob man. Marley and all. Of, <laughs> you know you can go there if you wanted to. But I know I sometimes it. you just do things to enjoy yourself. <laughs> but if you cut an album, I'm buying it. I'm buying it. I appreciate that, Henry. <laughs> I love it. All right, this is the end of our program. And... Um, like for Michael, I mean, um, Brian, Patrick, Michael, and we have two Michaels. I reversed it, Patrick Michael, but Michael, Brian, and David to unmute and uh, say a few words before we go. Thank you all for coming. I hope you had a great time. Um, let me just say this before the others talk. The true way to honor an artist, you go out there and buy a book. Buy a book of these, these um, artists, these poets, or if you know another poet, buy their book. Or go to a bookstore, just discover a poet. But um, these are difficult times, and um, you know, this is a good time to just sit back with your favorite liquor of choice, uh, whether fruit juice, brandy, cognac, whatever you might drink, water, tea, coffee, my love. And read a book, you know, or online. They got some versions online, or listen to an audio tape. So, um, James, Carl, thank you, brothers, for showing up and allowing us to this bestow all this love and creativity on you. And um, I thank you, Henry. I thank you for a, a great tribute to James and myself. And I, I appreciate everybody that you follow, up, everybody that decided, especially my pal Michael Diallo. I mean, I'm just overwhelmed. Thank you, fellas. I'd like to thank everybody uh, for 
the kind words. I'm, I'm so, so blessed that you all were uh, and are a part of my life. Uh, uh, there's no words that, that can, can express my gratitude. Uh, uh, Joseph Campbell said that uh, everybody's a poet. Uh, those we refer to as poets are people who make a lifestyle of being in touch with their feelings. And um, you all uh, have made a lifestyle of being in touch with your feelings. Christine and Vida, uh, uh, Pamela, uh, everybody who has, uh, has shared and been here. Uh, this is a copy of. Uh, there we go. You can find it on Amazon.com. Uh, this picture, right. That picture was taken with a disposable camera. I borrowed from Pamela. We were doing a workshop in a poetry competition. We were judges uh, in, in, uh, in, in Georgia. That three days. We spent most of our time in the beach. Uh, the, uh, the, the piece that Brian did, uh, uh, the bus, uh, came about through some times that were not good times. Uh, I got out of prison. I couldn't find a job. And so uh, my, my girlfriend suggested I work for myself. And so uh, she loaned me $300. I bought a truck through Trader's Post and uh, uh, went out to Bell Mead and told them I did God work. And, uh, and uh, the lady said, well, who's, who's, what references do you have? I don't have any, but you don't like it, you don't have to pay me. And so I, I got that job and another job, and I made a pretty good living until my truck broke. And uh, then I had to ride the bus. And uh, that's how that story came about. Uh, truck broke, had to ride the bus, get up early and, and bail me. And I noticed that most of the, all of the people who rode that bus to work and bail me had been doing so for years. And they were just like family. And that's how that story came about. Uh, I'm not going to take up a, a whole lot of time talking, but I, I'm just uh, very fortunate that, uh, that you all are in my life. Thank you. So anyone else, please unmute. Show your face. Some words to the legends before you go. James, you are a marvelous piece of work. You truly are, you and Chaos truly are uh, legends. And uh, really, I, it is me that is so proud to uh, know you guys. Because uh, hey, you're, like you said, living legends. And just keep on living, keep on writing. It's, it's more in you yet. Oh, there was a note. Right quick, there was a note that Chaos's CD is available, but it has, you have to direct message him. So if you're interested in obtaining his CD, he doesn't do the online sales. Thank you, Francesca. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my daughter, to Rita Roberts. She's my rock. She's here supporting me. I, I just wanted to say something really quick. Uh, when I was a, uh, I think I was a, uh, a junior in high school it must have been like 1996 i guess a while back um my my honors english teacher bob bradley i don't know if y'all remember him uh he he used to try to encourage me to go to windows of the crumble and and i was i think i was too scared back then <laughs> i was like wow that's that's like you know in nashville with like serious serious poets i i think i may have gotten down there and i got to observe it one time i don't remember it very well but i remember it being pretty awesome um, it was pretty cool the way it was, uh, I guess it was on second Avenue kind of facing the river or whatnot, that, that bar back there. It was pretty cool. Um, and, uh, Bob Bradley, he was, he was my teacher. I don't, I don't know if y'all remember him. He was, this was like, like I said, back in 1990, 
96, 97, I guess. And uh, he really inspired me. He was a, he was a really tough teacher. He was really, I don't know. He, by the time the year was over, I was able to write a pretty good essay, but it was after him just berating me and just really giving me a hard time about it until I figured it out. So I appreciate him, uh, even though at first I didn't know if I could stand him or not. And uh, I just uh, thank you all so much for, you know, being the people that inspired people that are my generation, because um, y'all certainly did. Um, if it weren't for him, who was a part of Windows of the Cumberland, I, I don't know how far I would have taken it, but, uh, you know, art is my life because of him and another person who was my teacher, who was my art teacher in high school. So I just, I just appreciate you all. And if you have time, I'd like to share just one little short minute for him with cool. all the people that perform. Oh, we would love that. Can I do that? Yes. All right. This is a poem called Shot, S-H-O-T. I've been shot at. I shot back. I've been shot to, shot through. I've been shot up, down, over, under, and all around. I've been shot through. But the greatest shot to come my way was aimed with care and armed with love, shot toward me by all of you. All right. Thank you, Brother Kim. Also. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes. Well, he shoots love back, that's for sure. Quarter. Yeah. Hey, we got kicked for a second there. I think that's it. We do have some extra time. Now, we can, we have about 30 more minutes. And when we're right. together, mm -hmm. You know, I said, look, guys, we have extra time, bring stuff, and just about all the ports. I know they got can a lot. Can I say of something? Henry, well, Brother Henry, can I say something? Yes, please. This is Brother Doc just listening in on this, hey, on this uh, tribute and celebration of two fellas that I work with over the course of time in my life, and I appreciate them both. I love you both, and I know you still got a lot of poetry left in you, <laughs> so let your mind flow. Let it flow, and let it flow to the people. Doc. Yes, sir. Appreciate you both. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any poets that would like to read or some of our guests to also give some words to the legends? Well, let's flip that around. Guests provide some words to the legends, and then poets read. Uh, I just wanted to thank Chaos publicly for helping me move in fall of 2019. So I had to move twice in six months, and then in spring of 2020, I had to leave Nashville due to gentrification and COVID joblessness. So uh, the the first move, though, he helped he helped me move um, among several movers. He brought a trailer and. We loaded his truck and trailer, I guess, about four different trips in the heat of August and September. And he can't lift, of course, with his uh, age and uh, disability, but he was there in the heat while we, you know, loaded that trailer and truck many times. And you just wouldn't believe it, his endurance and his willingness and his love to do that. And uh, I still appreciate it a lot. Quite uh, welcome, Scott. Quite welcome. Wow. Well, I, I'll never forget it. And everybody should know that he's the kind of guy that will do that. Yeah, that's much appreciated because anyone that's moved knows that when you ask around, no one is available. People, they'll say they'd be there. And they're like, ah, oh, yeah. nothing else. So yeah. that means a lot. I mean, I've been on that road, Carter, so, yeah. yeah. Anyone else? I'd like yeah. to say, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I want to hear James from the poem. James? Okay, I'd like to share a poem uh, 
we're, we're dealing with a lot of uh, a lot of problems with the with the the the, the murder of, uh, of of black people and uh, the uh, exoneration of the people who uh, who commit the crimes and uh, uh, I used to tell my students uh, when I taught that poetry the purpose of poetry is to find common denominators uh, those things we all have in common the uh, the range of, uh, of of human experience is very, very broad. We all got different experiences, but the range of human emotion is narrow, and the experiences are nothing but the catalyst for emotions. Nobody's ever had a feeling that's unique to them. We all have the same feelings. Um, so this this poem I've, I've said before. As a matter of fact, I wrote it in the seventies and maybe. I'll be able to stop saying it, but it's titled, I Am Black. And it gets rid of all the trivial, superficial. I am black. Not because my hair is nappy, dread like Jerry Curl or Corn Road. There was a woman who got down on her knees and prayed to a God she couldn't even see as her hair was dragged out and hanged. My soul hears that prayer. My soul can answer that prayer. I'm black, not because my skin is dark, but because there was a man who was forced to slave like an animal and was beaten until he bled from his wounds. And my, my spirit sees the blood. My spirit longs to heal those wounds. I am black, not because I raised my fist in the air, but because there was a child who reached out for her mother as she was dragged out to be sold like a cow or a mule. My heart feels the touch of that child. My heart owns the touch of that. I am black today, not because of affirmative action or or because of civil rights, or because of amendments to the Constitution. I am black because of my soul, my heart, my spirit. And I will be black tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, James. Yes. You know, you. let me say, didn't want to push that you guys read some, but I'm glad that you did because that is the missing element. <laughs> I'm really glad because uh, I spoke with James first and, you know, I'm like, well, he's got other things on his mind and to be reading two hours and something like that. And I was like, I just need the brother to read one and chaos read one. But I said, no, this is their moment. They can sit. It's like an awards thing. You don't want them up there performing, you know, get your award, hear the accolades and things like that. But I truly appreciate you guys reciting your work because uh, for the ones who have never heard of you or read your work, they see why we're doing this today. And there are many, many other poems out there. So, Henry, I have one dedicated all right. to all the poets that uh, have come to this special occasion, as well as, as I too honorees. It's called The Heart of a Poet. Okay, everyone. Everyone mute, please. We ready? Oh, yes. Everyone. Oh. The heart of a poet, my friend, beats like no other heart. In fact, it should go down in history as one of the eighth wonders of the world. Why? Because it loves deeper and it hurts longer. And even as the heart maybe is shattered in a thousand pieces, it still beats on, beating to a beat all its own. So do not despair, my children, if no one understands you or your special heart. Instead, proudly wear it like a badge of honor. 
for my poet friend, it is. Thank you, Navita. Thank you very much. All right, guys. It is 8.38. I want to thank you all for coming, spending this um, evening to commemorate these two gentlemen. And um, this is being recorded. So we're going to post it somewhere so that you can tell people, hey, you missed it. Let's go check it out. It's a wonderful time. Through the uh, magic of video editing, there might be, there should be a way to kind of um, condense some areas and have a nice smooth video. You know, technical things happen, that's just life, so. But we'll make it as um, professional as we can. You just do what you can with what you have. So everyone have a wonderful evening. And um, once again, thanks for the um, fellow brothers that helped pull this off. Brian, without you, first saying, hey, what if? And that's what the arts is about. You know, you start with that whole thing, what if, and then wonderful things happen. So, and um, you have a great night. So you go ahead and sign off and um, enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you. Good job. God bless hey, you all. Hey, it's been great being here. Bless you all. <clears throat> Glad to see everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone in Zoom land. Thanks for doing this. Bye, Cynthia.